Yo, what's up, everybody? Tom Wallace here, checking in. We are live. I am with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Henrik Harlow. Uh, we're here tonight because of your new movie, Salute. We are so excited about this one. Uh, so tonight we're going live on Henrik's YouTube channel, uh, New Schoolers and Down Days. And uh, we're here to talk about a movie a lot of people have been waiting for. This is a two-year movie uh, by Henrik Carlo, co-produced by Step Studios and Bug Visionaries. And now this is a movie I'm really excited about, and I think everybody's really excited about. It's a movie that's already been awarded Movie of the Year at IF3 just a few weeks back. Uh, it releases tomorrow on all Vimeo on demand channels or uh, video on demand channels. So Vimeo, Amazon, Apple, whatever, all the different things. Uh, and we actually have a special treat for you tonight. So one time only online premiere of the movie salute for all you diehard ski fans out here. Uh, this is the only time you're going to get to watch the movie for free and uh, just really excited about this. Henrik wants to give the movie back and uh, let everybody see it. So, all the ski fans are tuning in. We're going to have a Q&A after the uh, film. But first, we've got a big crew from the Salute movie here with us, along with Henrik. And I want to get down to the nitty gritty and start talking. Henrik, how are you, man? How's it going? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. How are you? I'm so good. I'm excited. I still have You still haven't let me sneak peek this, so this is going to be my first view as well. Um, yeah, I was... First off, I got to bring in the production crew to talk to you and me a little bit about uh, about what's been going on. I mean, we've got – who do we got with us today? We've got uh, Emil, obviously, who's been filming you constantly for a long time. Uh, Isaac, the director Stoge. of the project. And uh, Matthias, mm -hmm. who's the editor of the pro uh, project here. And we got to just get a little conversation going. I mean, Henrik, what – I mean, two years – what are you doing right now and where are you at? What's going on? Right now I'm in uh, Stubai, Austria, doing some skiing. And yeah, again, hyped up for another hopefully awesome season. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, of course. I mean, two years into making this movie, hopefully you're taking it easy now. Um, so tomorrow Love. the movie is releasing online. How important uh, is this project to you? It's probably the wickedest movie project that I've been part of making so far. So definitely it's been a lot of hard, hard work and yeah, so much time into making this one happen. And I'm so, so excited to finally get to, release it and show it to the community. So I'm hyped. For sure. How about this production team? These guys pull it together for you? You stoked on the, uh, the final kind of final version as you've seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so, so thankful. It's, it's crazy. We had the illest crew behind and in front of the camera making this project. So I, yeah, I'm just so grateful and I, yeah, can't thank him all enough. Uh, coming back to like just what's going on in the world nowadays and like how everybody's making stuff for, for Instagram or for whatever short form content, like how important is like a long <laughs> format, full length ski movie like this for you, uh, at, for Henrik and, and for anybody from the pr production side, if you want to jump in, like what does this mean to you, these full length sort of ski, ski films? Yeah, I mean, I could I could hop in. Um, I think Stepped is is really stoked to have the opportunity to come back and make make a feature length. It's been since 2014, um, and we've watched the world of content go to our phones, and everything's instant. Um, you know, I personally scroll through and see Henrik do some crazy trick that I've never seen before, and it's rad. But it, I kind of miss the old days of waiting all season and then. In the fall, you get all stoked up to watch a feature length film and you're ready for your own season to start. So um, when we got the opportunity to work with Henrik for a two year project, uh, I mean, we jumped right on it. It was super fun to kind of get back to our roots and just 
go back to the old classic style ski movie. Um, and we hope we can just kind of hype everyone up for a big season this year, especially after uh, quite a quite an end to last season. So um, I think it's the perfect time to drop uh, quite a big project that we're pretty pretty hyped on. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, Henrik, for you, like obviously making a two year project like this is a huge commitment uh, mentally, physically, uh, logistically. You know, connecting with all these people and some of the other amazing skiers we're going to talk to later. I mean, coordinating all this, how do you, you know, how do you balance that commitment to this film grind as well as the X games and the world cup circuit and everything else you're doing? How do you balance your time? It's, it just means so much to me, like putting together these movie projects that will last for hopefully longer than just a few days on the Instagram feed. So it, I just love it, and I've been the a big fan since I was young of ski movies, and being a big fan of writers that were always able to do both competition and film aspects. So I'm just trying to carry that torch, I guess. And yeah, I use it's basically all I do, and all my focus and all my energy in life is towards skiing. So it's it's not super crazy for me <laughs> it's because everything I don't do so much else. <laughs> that's all. That's all he's focusing on folks. Uh, again, everybody out there watching, be sure uh, to tweet, uh, TikTok, Instagram, post, share. Yeah. We've got the movie in just a little bit is going to be premiering online for free. So please post, share, let your friends know, send a text, uh, get them hyped up. Uh, let's come back to the production side of thing. I want to ask the guys from Stepped a couple questions. I mean, uh, Isaac, Matthias, where where are you guys now, and, and what's going on in your worlds? I mean, other than this project, what's up with the the whole Stepped crew? Uh, yeah, we're all out in LA. I actually don't even live here, but I've been kind of cruising over here for like the last six months, which has been rad. Um, we're all out in LA, and um, Matthias could actually lead you guys into a little bit more of everything going on he's he's been full-time with step for a few years now um you want to take the lead yeah, yes. yeah for sure man yeah so i've been with step for two years now which has just been awesome you know growing up in the ski industry myself watching ski movies it just kind of felt like a natural fit to tap in with those guys and it's just been an awesome experience experience for the past two years um stepped we're really making a big push into more commercial work so that's where a lot of our focus is as a, as a, as a company at this point, but it's great where we're still, you know, still have the passion for ski films and skiing. So we still do a lot of ski, you know, style branded content. And then also, you know, always want to be sure we find the time for projects like this, especially when we have the opportunity to work with Henrik and kind of like Isaac was saying earlier, stage true to the roots, you know, cause it's like this kind of funny thing where sometimes it feels like everyone's kind of moved on from skiing, but then when you dive back into it and like, start talking about it and work on these projects, you can tell that everyone's still like, you know, the passion's still there at the end of the day. So it's, you know, really fun for me and everyone I, else, I, I believe, just to kind of, you know, keep, you know, having the opportunity to work on films like this. It's mad fun. Yeah. What, yeah I, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I got the call two years ago. Um, I can't even remember the last time I'd seen Henrik or any of you guys and felt like I kind of hadn't seen the ski industry in years. Um, but got the call from Nick and he was saying that uh, Henrik's trying to make a two-year project. And it was an honor to even be considered to, to kind of take the reins here. So um, I hopped right on it. And I remember the first season we went out to X Games to film a little bit and I ran into all the boys. I was like, don't even know if they'll remember me. I remember Tom, I saw you at the top of the start gate at Slope Style and you were like, what's up, man? Dude, I haven't seen you in forever. It's like so fun to see that this industry just like kind of accepts us all back because we miss it. Um, as as fun as commercials are, they're, they're definitely not the same as going out in Duluth, Minnesota into like <laughs> crush ice at two in the Yo. morning. <laughs> My, uh, my big question is, I guess, uh, so, you know, from balling out in the world of big branded commercials and stuff, do you guys see a lot of like back and forth sort of cross kind of inspiration? Like, do you bring 
sort of that beautiful aesthetic from the brand commercial to a ski movie and then also bring the motion and the grittiness of the ski movie to big brand commercials like how is that sort of back and forth is that sort of yeah i think it's it's a funny world it's uh if you look around i think some of the biggest movers and shakers in the commercial world are kids who came up in skateboarding and skiing and snowboarding and um all sorts of action sports surfing whatnot um because you kind of really gotta like cut your teeth in that stuff you like if you're out until four in the morning trying to film a rail and it's you know you're in Min or montreal and it's negative 40 degrees you're not going to complain on set when it's you know never going to be anything like that so you kind of take the like gritty and the hard work and i think that's why you see so many action sports kids so successful in the creative side of like commercials and that kind of content is um, and we're always trying to bring both sides in, you know, uh, this project was quite a mix of everything, like from the chorus style of filming to like trying to bring in a little bit more of that storytelling and that, uh, commercial appeal. Henrik skis like 320 days a year or something. So we had a meal, just such a G with him every single day, capturing everything that he could um so we kind of just found a balance between what emil was able to cover just by himself like running around like a madman and then anytime we could bring in a bigger crew uh we would kind of try and pour more resources into uh touching on on like a more commercially side like a more production heavy side so cool. There's oh, always a balance. Cool. that's yeah that's super interesting for me to to hear and i mean speaking of a meal i mean You've been Henrik's filmer for what, the last eight years or so, and been involved in so many of these projects, and obviously the lead camera on, on a lot of this stuff. I mean, what's it like for you spending the entire winter with this guy? I mean, you sick of him yet, or he's just the best? I mean, I mean no, I'm not sick of him, not <laughs> at all. Uh, I mean, if I was that, I wouldn't have been able to spend the past eight years with him, basically. It's been... The seasons have been getting longer and longer for every year, so it's basically a full year by this time. Not now but since of Corona, but if that wouldn't have kicked in, I bet I would have been with him since a couple of months back. Yeah. Where, uh, where are you now and what are you up to right now? I'm posted up in Sweden, uh, hanging out with some homies, uh, getting some other production stuff started up uh, to hopefully some, sometime reach the, the level of uh, stepped for sure. No, very sick. I mean, how about the relationship between all three of you guys and Henrik, you can talk to this as well. I mean, you know, how was the whole production coming together from, you know, capturing the footage to Matthias or, you know, on the editing side, like where, you know, where did all the inspiration come from? Is Henrik leading the charge? Is it a collaborative effort? What's just kind of sum up the whole production for me? Um, it was a fun little puzzle. I mean, Emil has such a sick eye and style and like we really just wanted to dive into focusing on that, especially with how much time obviously he's spending filming this film. Um, so I think the first thing we sat down creatively and tried to figure out was like how to meld all this stuff together um, with like, I think a bunch of different formats were really fun to play with uh, film and DSLR and cinema cameras and uh, throwing it back to mini DV um, and just kind of like playing around with the mess that it was. Um, we, we couldn't really plan out like we would on a, a short term shoot. Um, so we just had to like embrace the mess of media. Um, at one point we were asking for phone videos and like even photos from the crew and stuff like that. So crazy it was just like trying to figure out how to meld that all together and it was really fun to kind of embrace a meal as like the lead of that um uh, and and style it around his style of filming which was super fun very cool no that's awesome i mean it turned out so well i think everybody's really excited to to see the movie uh what about any you know challenges this year obviously with covid with traveling um you guys obviously probably ran into some issues, but still able to, to complete 
the movie. Take us through like the end of the season there. Uh, what, what went down? Any plans get canceled or moved or, or kind of what was the whole year like for, for the whole team? Yeah, we were oh, – sorry, go ahead, Emil. We, we were in, uh, in Oslo or in uh, Norway for the for X Games. And from there we went to, to Sweden for the Swedish Championships. That was supposed to go down, but it got canceled. And the day it got canceled, everywhere was getting canceled. Like flights were getting canceled, countries were being locked down, and we didn't know what to do. So we ended up booking a flight to uh, – to uh, to Canada, so we flew to Canada and spent uh, a month and a half in in quarantine over there. Crazy. We yep. skied Sammy and we got some footage and had a good time, but it ended up being Sweden that we left was the best place to be. <laughs> so after spending a month and a half in in Canada, we went back to Sweden and really started getting back to work again. Yeah, we had the uh, kind of a huge plan at the end of this film from the very start, and that was to do a big park shoot out in Andorra, um, go back to like where Henrik lives and get the whole crew. We were talking about bringing out Nick Martini and Cam Riley to like really pour everything into a big production and maybe get Alex Martini to start jumping with Henrik with the camera and all that good stuff. So. We were super excited and, and that kind of all got derailed um, and it was supposed to be kind of the ender of our whole film. So um, like Stoge said, they were out. They don't stop. It's insane. Like I'm sitting in quarantine in New York City and Stoge and Henrik and Matthias were all talking and like, we're like, yeah, we just filmed like another another like whole pillow section. And like we ended up cutting a pillow section that they went and filmed during quarantine while everyone else was locked down and um we were trying to figure out the plan to like fix this lack of a park shoot and originally we talked about going to hood and building jumps up in hood and then uh turned out sweden had enough snow and the boys i don't know if you guys want to tell a little story about what you guys did in sweden to put together the ender it was insane yeah that was i was pretty crazy for sure like after being pretty much locked down for a while and then finally being able to go back to Sweden once it started getting a little bit more chill to fly again. And then, yeah, we just got a military tent that we've been staying in before up in Riksgränsen and got that. And me, Stoge, and some friends, including Oystens, who's in the movie as well, and, like, yeah, some some really good friends and basically just like isolated ourselves from pretty much everything. You stayed out in the military tent and barely any phone service, just enough to like keep contact with family and everything like that to make sure all was good on that side. But then, yeah, just living out in the mountains and enjoying. And it was like such a relief after that, like, month and a half of basically being locked down in Canada to just live outside. And we would like hike up and you ski and like enjoy it so much just for the soul, like definitely shooting a lot as well, but also just like, it was such a amazing experience and trip. And what is so cool about Rick's grandson too, is above the Arctic circle, so around that time of the year, the sun never really sets. So all the shots that's in that segment is shot from El like maybe 10 at night until 5 in the morning. And that's like that long of a sunset sunrise where it's all red and orange and crazy. So it was like, yeah, it was a crazy time, but also like, one of the wickedest experience as well. Very cool, man. So cool. Uh, I could talk to you guys forever. Unfortunately, we got to keep moving on. We got a lot of other guests. Thank you to the whole production team for, for tuning in again. Anybody out there, if you got questions for these guys, uh, leave a comment. We're going to be doing questions at the end following the one time only will not be replayable 
premier online absolute in about 10 to 15 minutes. So tell your friends. And, and with that, thank you guys. Uh, we're going to come back to these guys at the end with the Q and a, but for now I want to move on uh, to some of the North American contingent of the salute crew. And, and we're going to say bye to the production crew and bring in Peace. Carl and Clayton, yeah, two of our North yeah, American boys, two of our North American athletes that you went to film with. And these guys, I mean, Carl, one of the best to ever do it in the backcountry. Clayton on the film side, on the urban side, a legend. These guys are two of the best you chose to come out and film with you. Uh, let's, let's bring these guys in and, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the filming. So Carl, Clayton, where are you guys? What are you doing? What's up, Tom? Yo. Just kicking back in Idaho, getting ready for winter fired up to get that snowmobile brapping and go hit some booters. Hopefully we'll get a bunch of snow this winter. What about you, Clayton? Yeah. Uh, I'm in LA, quite the opposite, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where I live these days and hoping for some snow soon. But right now I'm just hitting some waves, working on my filmmaking side of my life and uh, yeah, post it up. So when, when did you first hear about Henrik's project or, or kind of, did Henrik call you guys? Did you hear about it? What made you guys want to be involved with, with this project, I guess? Carl, you want to go ahead? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Henrik's a manager and just all around OG. Raf had originally hit me up back in 2018, 2019, asking if I wanted to do some filming with Henrik over in uh, Jackson. And I wasn't able to make it happen that year. And, looking back I was kind of feeling like I missed out on an opportunity there and then going into 1920 um got hit up again to go meet up with uh Chris Logan and Henrik and Matthias and good chunk of the crew up in Baker and like just knew I had to make it happen that time and so pinned it out to Baker to meet up with the boys pulled into Bellingham my transmission blew out of my truck and Thankfully, Chris Logan was there, picked us up, and uh, we ended up all carpooling in his rig for the whole week and just had a sick trip. It was a trip where I feel like not everyone would have stacked a lot of clips because we were just kind of had some difficult temperatures where it was right around 32 degrees and the snow was a little bit manky, as we say. But uh, Henrik, Chris, everyone was just like, you know, we got what we got. Let's make do. And it literally turned out to be like one of the best, most productive trips I've ever been a part of. And it was a trip that, you know, other crews might have got skunked on. And it was just so sick being in that environment with Chris, who's one of the best ever, Henrik, who is the best ever. And yeah, it was just so much good energy and, and a scent fest. Yeah. That's sick, bro. I haven't seen that stuff, by the way. Yeah, I've only seen the street part, so I'm stoked. I'm stoked to check that out. Sounds like you guys are killing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, good trip. Haven't been in the streets in a while. And I saw the saw the movie, and you guys are doing what you do. Just classic destruction in the urban environment. And Yeah, how is it for you? You know, I feel like don't see quite as many segments, but it looks like all you got to do is go – get back in the streets and it's all right there and still fucking the game up left and right. Yeah. Thanks bro. Yeah. I mean, Cam and I, like we, we both like live down the street from each other in LA now. And, uh, um, obviously are like full-time filmmakers, but, uh, you know, skiing is obviously still a big part of our life, like mentally more than anything. And like, I don't know, street is like, like a lot of people who know who do it is super, uh it's it's a lot less about the skiing and a lot more about like the knowledge of how to do the process and um so like yeah we're never we're always a little rustier and frankly like a little like weaker in the legs and shit like that you know <laughs> so it's like definitely like it's i guess it's probably more like we're um we gotta like work out the kinks of our nerves basically also like just you know like getting into spots takes another hour before your first hit or something like that. But, you know, it's always the same process and, and, uh, we, we just got to get out there every year, you know, for, for something or another. And for the past few years, Cam and I, you know, spent just like a few weeks every year shooting with TGR, but you know, once step is working off film with Hendrick, like I can't even remember when, uh, 
and he like invited me to be a part of it. But I think it was just like a given because him and I've always talked about wanting to shoot street together and never have gotten a chance to. So, um, yeah, it was just no brainer. We all just got out there and, you know, it was the same old thing that, you know, Cam and I are used to, but just with, with the real G, you know, and it was super ill to just like combine, I think like, you know, Cam and I are really uh, like tactical about our street stuff. So like, we have like a very, very like set way that we like build our jumps and landing in spots and like, you know, work things out. But it's, and we just have never, ever worked with anybody else. Like literally never. Like I've never like shot with like anybody except for just like Cam and Sean and Shay and like my homies. Like, cause we've just gotten like way too narrow minded with like how we do things, you know, <laughs> but obviously like, introducing Hendrick, I think in like our system and then taking obviously having his like talent and ability involved was just like kind of cool as shit. Cause there's a lot of times Hendrick, you can probably speak to where like, like I remember at one point, um, I, I changed her jump on that one spot, you know, like when I was shooting it and it was like, you know, street, like it's such a partnership with like, at least when Cam and I do it, like the person shooting us is a skier too, you know? So it's like, you're like just a different set of eyes on their trick. And it's like, you almost have like, I would say 40% of the responsibility of like helping them get that trick, you know? Cause it's like, first of all, you're shooting it to make sure that once it gets it, it's not whack, <laughs> you know, like you better have a good angle, you know? And then like, second of all, it's like, yo, do I have the speed? And you're like, yeah, maybe, or maybe not. Or like, yo, this isn't working. What am I doing wrong? Shit that you can't see, you know? So um, yeah, that whole process was like, as stubborn as we are, never have anybody new in the mix. It was like the illest to do it with Henry. Yeah, it's crazy how committed the spots you guys go to are as well. Like, definitely in the backcountry, there's committed spots, but there's also places where, you know, there is a lot of room for error and you can come up short or go big and, you know, land in a bunch of fresh snow where, like, you're talking about being rusty, going into hitting the features that you hit, and it's just mental. Like, it doesn't, at all look like you're rusty but that level of confidence that you guys have to take into those spots is unreal and then yeah just trusting whoever's on the winch and who's ever getting the shot and all that it's insane it's mad respect yeah i'll tell you Chris. what at least at least there's no avalanche coming for you in the streets thank that's you what, wally yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> well, tonight sitting over here like, yeah that's cute and everything but so we ain't not, you can't get him back there. Bro. Can't get him back there. Uh, yeah. Get yeah. those abbies away from me. Uh, Henrik, do you yeah. got to say, I mean, obviously you wanted these guys involved. What has their skiing kind of meant to you? Have you looked up to these guys or been inspired by them? Or, or why did you want, uh, you know, Clayton and Carl involved? Yeah, definitely. Both are, or like everybody that's in the cast of this movie are people I look up to so much. And a lot of them are people that I haven't, like Clayton was saying, like had the chance to ever really shoot with before. Like I always been in a good relationship as friends and like got to ski some park and stuff like that, but never got together and worked for the same project. So it was an awesome opportunity. And I'm so, so honored to have had the chance to work with so many people that I really, really admire and look up to. These guys are the illest. Like uh, I learned, I got so much knowledge from, yeah, from all these writers and I'm so, so thankful. Very cool. No, I, I will agree with that completely. Both of you guys have, have always inspired me as well. Love watching you guys ski. Can't wait to see your footage in the new movie. Uh, we're going to keep you on the line. We're going to come back for more Q&A after the movie. But right now, I think we got to jump, jump again. I wish we could keep, keep this going all day. We got to jump across <laughs> the pond. So you guys take a little breather. Anybody else out there watching, ask a question. I know you got questions for Clayton, for Carl, uh, for Henrik. Uh, we're going to jump to the other side of the pond and check in with some of the European crew uh, so that we can get all you guys watching to the, to the premiere. I know you're antsy to see Henrik's new movie. So we're going to get uh, bring in the crew from Europe. We have uh, Noah, Oystein, and, and Jakob here. So some of the European contingent, uh, Jakob, you might know, he actually taught Henrik his first backflip. That's the stat I've got listed here. Uh, Noah lives in Andorra with Henrik. So one of his 
best friends there, skiing together constantly. And Oystein, been a part of the film for both of these years filming. And uh, welcome, guys. How's it going? Yo, yo. Doing good. Yo, yo. thank you, Tom. Yo. Jakob uh, looks like Can I uh, introduce? Uh, yeah. Can I? Because uh, right here is like the same, like what I was saying with Clayton and Carl, too. Like all these three are some some of the people that I look up to the most from the very beginning, but same, like have never got to get together and shoot for like the same project. Like Jakob, like you were saying in the introduction, he taught me how to do my very first backflip in 2000. And we traveled a lot, being on, sponsored by many same sponsors, been staying together during competitions and have been out in Rick's Grandson and filming together before. but. Yeah, this was like the first time we ever got to film for the same project. And that was like a crazy salute. And then Oysten, we always had awesome vibe, like skied together, mostly during contests in the past. And we just had like super good vibes. And yeah, it was like about time to for us to like start exploring together outside of the contest. And that was like so so sick Aisden was like the illest to have around as well and same even with Noah like Noah had been around too like we ever since I moved to Andorra in 2014 we we hang out basically every single day like he lives five ten minutes from my house and we always gilling and mm -hmm. yeah to finally like this was like the first project that I got to put in some some notch clips in there and yeah, huge blessing. So thank you guys so much. Very cool. No, it's so cool to hear some of the backstory and, and really awesome that you were able to involve all these guys. Let's, let's start with Noah, uh, you know, Andorra. Uh, you were also a big kind of subject in, in Henrik's previous movie, the regiment. What was filming for this two year project like compared to that movie and, and just take us through kind of, you know, the history you've got with Henrik in these movies. Yes, sir. Thank you, Tom. Blessed to be part of this movie, first of all. I wish I would have had more time to film for it, like Regiment, for example. But I'm still so honored and grateful to have something in it. But yeah, going back to what you asked, um, I had way more time for filming when we were filming for the regiment and it was stepped also. But I wasn't feeling as good because I came back from an injury, but I was able to spend a lot of time helping and like hanging out around Henrik and the production of it. So mm -hmm. really stoked for that. And this past two years, yeah, it also got me with some other projects. But yeah, I feel very honored to be part of this one. And we also had the chance to make a park shoot in my like home resort, which is where I've been skiing my whole life. So that's such a such a blessing and highlight for me that we were able to do that. It was kind of the first park shoot even that we did there. And it, it was even for such a big thing that, yeah, feeling very grateful and honored to be here. Very cool. No, that's awesome to hear. I mean, it's, I still have never been to Andorra, so I got to make it this season. Uh, yeah. Oystein, oh, yeah. what about you? I mean, I've seen some of your season edits and a lot of park footage and some urban, but like, I've never seen you in a big, like major film before, maybe some of the field stuff back in the day, but like, how was it for you jumping into this? This is a two year project with Henrik, a, a big major movie and a lot of the backcountry stuff, you know, just tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it was, um, it was unreal. It was, um, such, such an honor to, to get asked. I remember we were, we were at X games, me and Henrik and then, uh, one of the days, Henrik and Raf came up and asked if I wanted to come to Chamonix and film. And yeah, it was um, such an honor and really cool to get to be a part of this project. And uh, went on that trip for two weeks. It was really, really fun. And then uh, got to join in again on, on the Rick Stranson trip and stayed there for a month. So just. Uh, 
great experience and the filming everything everything i learned from from uh from the boys and the crew and 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 just being hanging out and yeah it was it, it was amazing something that i'll never forget probably the best trips i've had skiing ever very cool man yeah that does i mean the endless sunsets i mean the slushy snow building jumps uh, let's move on. Jakob. I mean, obviously we told this story kind of, is there anything you remember from, from being a kid? I mean, Henrik, I think, you know, says that you were one of the first guys that got him into free skiing, taught him backflips, like first inspiration. Like, do you remember his, him as like a little tiny 10 year old or whatever he was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah, for sure. You know, uh, me and Henrik, we go way back, you know, like our families knew each other. Um, growing up and uh i was doing Al alpine racing back then so was henrik and i think i started to ski with him when he was like were you like 10 or 11 something like that and uh i had just kind of quit racing because i wanted to become a mogul skier because that was like uh i didn't really know about what we do back then you know like moguls was about as close as you could get to what would later become freestyle skiing as as we know it so um went down that route for a while and then it started seeing some ski movies with the canadian air force and all those uh, legends and <laughs> started doing that and this little kid you know henrik just kind of was like following us around in the park or there wasn't even really a park back then but you know wherever there were some jumps built next to the racing course and the rest is history, you know, like I could tell from an early age that he was, uh, he was uh, destined for greatness and uh, super hungry, always super keen and, and down to, uh, to push the boundaries of his own skiing. And with an alpine racing background, you could tell that he had the skill to, uh, to go very far. And it's pretty crazy, like 20 years later and watch it like all unfold, you know, like almost the way I sort of envisioned it for a while. Very cool. I mean, we heard from Henrik, I guess. Anybody have any like fun stories from the shoot? I mean, Chamonix, Jakob, you're out there kind of full time in the winter now. I mean, what was that two weeks like you and Oista and Henrik? Uh, I mean, that's some heavy backcountry out there. That's not just uh, building a jump in, in the side country. So yeah, tell us, I mean, any, any good stories from that trip? Well, that was kind of a uh... I knew that I knew Henry was filming for a two year movie um, and I had some of my own projects going on. And like you say, I've been out in Chamonix, France for that for the last five years, basically spending my winter there because I don't want to do as much traveling as I used to on the contest circuit. I want to stay somewhere with big mountains where I can, you know, figure out the terrain and, uh, and sort of grow into it. And well, obviously some of the biggest mountains in Europe and, or the biggest, so there's plenty of terrain to grow into. Um, and I, you know, Henrik's always been going his own way, and there's no point in trying to like steer him anywhere. <laughs> you know, you gotta, he's gotta figure that shit out by himself. And I always like, oh, you should come out, Sham, you know, check out the terrain. It's not just steep skiing, there's some sick booter spots. And, and this year, uh, or last year in February, um, Stog, who has been spending some time with me and Sham as well, he's like, he reached out and was like, I think Henrik wants to come to Sham. I'm like, hell yeah, let's get this going. And uh, the crew came up for what, like two or three visits over the course of like a few months. And uh, it was super fun showing him around and and uh, with Oysten as well. And my brother came out and yeah, we had a great time. Very cool. Yeah, I remember too, it was, it was so wicked because... Like during our first trip, while Oistan was with us as well, it was basically sunny and warm for that whole trip and like didn't snow at all. So we would meet a lot of people every day, like after skiing, and they were like so bummed. They're like, oh, the conditions are not so good. And then, <laughs> but we, we were like so, so hyped because we would always just everything that was north facing, so it was in the shadow was perfect for landing snow so we would just build jumps into north facing pitches and would every day like stack and be like in the sun and like 
enjoying like spring kind of vibes but yeah. like jumping into some cold snow that was, it was like so awesome it was crazy like you'd build jumps in the sun it was like perfect blocks <laughs> and it was like almost slushy sort of and you're like in in a t-shirt and the landings would stay pow for two two weeks straight with no precipitation and and sunny all day and uh yeah all that terrain is kind of like stuff that sham skiers kind of overlook too so like there's no competition for powder and, and uh yeah pretty much the perfect buddha trip very cool wow well you guys got me fired up to see this movie uh it's so good checking in with all of you guys and, and inspirations to all of us as well we're gonna keep you on again we're gonna have a q a after the premiere so Thanks, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Watch the movie. And, and then if you got any questions out there, everybody watching for any of these guys, please uh, leave a message, leave a question for us so we can get to it. Uh, Henrik, I mean, I think it's finally getting to be uh, that time. You wanted to surprise everybody and, and play this mu movie for the world. Why, why did you decide that you, you wanted to put this out for free? What's the deal with that? uh basically i just wanted to give it back to the culture and the community that i love so much and like the last since 2013 every movie that i've made up put out for free and this one was definitely a different type of production value and like felt a little bit more established so i think it, it was just right for it to go like for sale, it's only it's a, gonna be cheap, obviously. But yeah, I just wanted to have like we were supposed to also have like a full on movie tour where we at least get to show it for free for people and all this. But yeah, when that got canceled because of the COVID and everything, then we just figured it's a perfect opportunity just to do it live for the people. Very cool. I, I'm stoked on that. I mean, given. If you're watching out there, you're tuning in, you're a core ski fan, and we thank you guys so much. Uh, this is a surprise for the community. Uh, this is a one-time only. Uh, it's not going to be released. This interview won't include it afterward. So text your buddies, tell them it's on. Without further ado, open up that screen. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume, he says. Uh, let's get down to business, and let's show you guys. Salute. Wow. Oh my gosh. Amazing work. Uh, I mean, that was so cool to see it all, uh, you know, here at home for everybody out there watching. I wish I could have seen it on the big screen. I know that premiere tour would have been amazing, but thank you, Henrik, for, for showing it to the world like that, giving all the kids out there a, a chance to see it and for free and that movie. Wow. I mean, 
how do you feel? Was that uh, was that pretty exciting to see that thing premiere all around the world? Yeah, it was. It's wicked. It's it's so powerful to me. Like you like crazy how much work and effort the whole crew put to make this whole thing happen. So to be able to watch it right now is it's like almost emotional kind of in a way, you know, all those yeah. custom builds, the big backcountry jumps, those long days. I, I know, I know a little thing about it and that did not look easy. You must've been hustling out there for some of that stuff into the setting sun. Wow. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, like for sure. Like you say, like, uh, any like backcountry booter, if you don't really know, like it, it takes some work and time to like figure out to have like your your balance point ready for like landing if you just used to hit in perfect park jump so it's not really the same so really and same with like the urban stuff like obviously like it's not like a normal park rail or anything like that so big salute thanks and yeah it's crazy all the writers that were part all the filmers all the producers everything like yeah for me, it's like super big, so it means a lot. Very cool. No, that was amazing to watch. So much variety, so much fun. I mean, I, I want to get into the Q&A. We're going to just start with you uh, before we bring some of the other guys in. But this question is from Peter Gardiner, and I feel like it, it, it really fits right here. So, And this is something I'm curious about, too. Like, Do you personally, Henrik, get more hyped for, for a big project like this, like Salute, to, to drop? or like getting a podium or winning at a big comp like what what's like a bigger moment or what feels better to you i i don't really compare the two to each other because i feel like the feelings are pretty different like i always refer to like with a competition and film ski into like a music artist producing an album and a live show like all the, these movies it's like our albums it's like where we put our heart and soul and everything for it to be like fit into you and like your personal way of skiing and art and then competition is basically like a live show where you just want to get hyped up and get the crowd wild and like show what you can do when it really matters and like with all the pressure so it's like two different feelings but i believe the film release feeling is a longer lasting like this like the feeling i can go back and watch a movie from like eight years ago and still be like getting those chills kind of but it, i also get the chills when i watch tanner on top of the starting like hyping me up at x game so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really compare the two, but it's, yeah. Good reason to be doing Different. both of them. No, for sure. I mean, I, I, that, that film got me hyped up. I'll tell you for sure. Let's, let's move on. We got another question here from uh, at sleepy grill and it was in French, but luckily yeah. Raph was able to uh, translate it for me. Uh, and he's just asking if, if easy Panda is the most stylish guy on this planet. You gotta, here's your chance to hype up your boy. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of my very, very far favorite skiers to watch right now. I feel like he is like fully a prodigy of my favorite type of skiing. He like represents style over technicality, even though he is mad technical and like it's like pushing that that letter as well or whatever you say. But yeah, I I admire. Isaac so much he is so hyped up and so stoked and to be able to help him out it's like I can just see it in him he's like he loves it and yeah his style is like it's so fluent so natural and so it's amazing like when you see him outside of filming or anything like that it's crazy and then like here like when we brought him to Minnesota, that was like his very first urban trip ever. He had only hit like one real urban rail before going there last year 
together with the Bulldogs gang. Uh, but yeah, so for him to go out to Minnesota and like step into like some real street situations was like it was so sick because he's like so hyped up and within eight days he stacked like six clips that was like fire sick very cool no i very that some of his stuff was on point and one thing i noticed uh in, in this movie in particular i feel like the whole it's it's a different style and a different vibe with the music and the shots and the way it builds and and that kind of brings me to to the next point of I, I would love to bring the production crew back in to talk a little bit about this. I mean, this was a, a, a different kind of vibe for you. Let's let's bring Emil back in, Matthias and Isaac back in to join on a little discussion just about the film itself. I mean, Henrik described to me was it was it your plan to have this one be you know, I mean, the music and the build and the epicness it, is unique. It's a little different than some of your other stuff. Was this uh, was this your choice? Was this the production team's idea? Where did where did the whole kind of vibe come from? No, for sure, like hundred percent. Like just already like going into the whole project, I knew I wanted to see my skiing and the people around with a di different spotlight, kind of. Like the last nine years, I basically edited all of my stuff. Or Regiment, it was me and Matthias together, but very like, inf I think I had a big influence still right there. But with this project, I I basically just wanted to hand over the footage and have them do the magic, basically. Like for sure, I we had a good relation back and forth, like making sure that like the actions was like shown the certain way that I wanted to, because we had so many clips to select and like a lot to like take out and whatnot. So I definitely wanted to make sure that like certain certain clips were in it. But I I was so like these guys are the illest step and the whole squad is like I fully of course trust them and mm -hmm. like it's nobody else I would rather just like give the footage to and be like please treat it nicely and yeah i'm I'm so so thankful because like i was saying it gave a whole different perspective than i ever had on a in a movie before and i'm so thankful that they treated it that way they did thank you very, brothers very cool i mean this i i got a question here from luca plevnik plevnik uh on instagram and and he's asking for Isaac or or Matthias, uh, who did the the music for the soundtrack, and, and or where did you find the music, or or what's you know he wants to know a little bit more about that uh, that music. Can one of you guys tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of it, I think, was just stuff I had been listening to at the time and was stoked on. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of a goal going into it was to try and for one do something different uh, with the film in general, and then also you know especially with the music. Um, I think with ski movies, we've kind of been seeing a lot of the same thing for a long time. So thank you, Henrik, for giving us the space to push it and having the trust there. Um, and yeah, so I think the music was really just kind of trying to create five segments of the film that felt different, kind of took on a life of their own. Um, so Isaac and I just ended up going back and forth with that. And then we were actually lucky um, for the last segment um, in Sweden there. I think I had just watched Interstellar, some Christopher Nolan movies. So that was kind of the inspiration there. And then Isaac and I really um, worked together on that. And he brought in one of his buddies to do the score for it. Um, you probably don't know, Isaac's got some music skills. So he was like, you know, laying the groundwork there and working with him and his buddy on that, just kind of like took it to that next level um, of customization and just the fun process for sure. Very, wow. No, that's awesome. I get, I get that now, the interstellar vibe. I can see that. Uh, another one for... For both of you guys, or or for or Emil, I mean, what cameras? This is Tom Tomsky wants to know what cameras did you use for the film? So, what was everything shot on? Uh, Emil is our main camera. Emil, if you want to take it, I mostly shot most of everything. I shot was on a Sony A7 III with the 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 zoom lens on it. 
Besides that, it was a mini mini DV camera that we use for like travel and just all around. Yeah, Emil's a ninja. He like goes around with this neck strap, and you like you're like you want to throw that on a tripod or something. Like he's like, no, I got it, and he just like gets these crazy long lens shots handheld that you swear are tripod or like these crazy zooms and like that's like kind of what I was saying where we were building off Emil's style. It was so fun to play with, but. Um, we also shot a little bit of red. Um, we shot on a Bolex for the Super 16. Uh, Matthias shot on some 8 mil out in yeah. Uh, Baker. Yeah. Um, Yahtzee. Yeah, Yahtzee. Yeah, on 8 mil. So uh, we had we had pretty much everything. Yeah. I don't even know. We might have had iPhone in there. Yeah. Um, Probably some GoPro in there too. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of variety. Uh, hey. HVX too from Oliver, oh, yeah. like yeah. in Minnesota, those those follow yep. cams as well. Yeah, yeah, we we were big actually gonna do solution. we were gonna do HVX like for all the street stuff, but we ended up not having like I forget what it was either like we ran out of tape or um, battery or something. But oh it was fun. man, old kind school style skate everything. style with the HVX and stuff. You get a VX twenty one hundred out there. <laughs> Uh, I got to ask a question. This That's is the down, down days wants to know, Emil, how did you get the nickname of Stojin? Everybody out there wants to know, where did the nickname Stojin come from? It's a long story, but it... Uh, hey, we got time. We got time. <laughs> it originates from the stork, I guess. The I, don't know. I don't know who came <laughs> up with it, uh, a couple different stories. Of why and when, but it originates from the stork. Okay, okay. Uh, this one is from San Winship. Wants to know, uh, I guess, for Isaac or Matthias. I guess maybe more Matthias. How do you? What's the process? Or both of you, I guess. Yeah. Sure. What's the process like of deciding? You know, what other riders to feature, or what other shots to feature, and how to balance. Uh, you know, Henrik's clips, which obvi obviously it's his movie and the movie's about him, which with the other riders, how did you guys decide what clips fit in there? I mean, and I noticed it's a lot more quality over quantity. Each shot is really shown for what it is. Like, how did you decide what made it and what did it? Um, well, I guess the short answer of that is like, who's delivering the the bangers, you know? Like if you're seeing well, then it's gonna, <laughs> you got the sick tricks and it's gonna go in the movie. Whoever's got heat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you're throwing down, we'll put you in there, you know? No wonder you guys so, didn't invite me. I get it, I get it. Got it, it makes it, it's, you, you know, did. it's easy. You know? <laughs> so, okay. But I guess like a more, like to talk, talk more specifics with that, like, um. I think with this, like you, you mentioned like multiple angles and showing tricks, you know, all the way through. Um, I think that's kind of like a reflection of just, you know, how much time goes into, you know, building the jump or hiking the rail spot or whatever. So it's like, there's just so much time and energy on the back end that goes into this that it only kind of makes sense to try and just like really, you know, the sh you know how, you know how stoked you are when you get a clip, you know, after yeah. you know, working for 12, 12 hours and it's like, man, I got that six seconds. That's awesome. So really trying to, you know, give the, the, clips and the athletes the time they deserve and then also with this I think you know it's great to be working with you know all these writers and Clayton and Cam and you know guys that I've looked up to for a while so it was kind of a little bit of a shift from the regiment where that was all focused on Henrik and I think this was more of a focus on kind of like the team vibe and you know how Henrik is still the focal point but he's you know amping people up you know making the team around him ski even better you know I mean I got cam riley to come out for what two trips this year so that was you know that says something right there you yeah know? <laughs> shredding. so um isaac i don't know if you have anything you know yeah i think i think back to what we were talking about earlier which is like the the ability to drop a feature length film here versus like the clips you can go on and see on instagram like again today like you can go see the coolest trick Henrik's done in the last two years, we scroll down his feed um, as far as like park stuff goes. So we got this insane dump of footage. Like there was just limitless footage and Matthias just like, it was, a, it, I think is what we were working with. So it was yeah. Like a lot. yeah. So Matthias is just kind of running through like such an insane amount of skiing and to 
narrow it down. Like I, I think we both sat and decided we'd much rather show like the best of the best here. Like, like I mentioned earlier, we cut an entire pillow segment um, just because the boys were limited on production and it was during quarantine. And um, as fun as it was to watch, it's just like, don't think it was like right up to par with what we wanted to show in this movie. So we felt like just displaying the very best of two years of Henrik skiing, like, if you want to go get quantity, you can go get that on Instagram, explore, you know? So to just load it up with like the very best. And we had a, we had a couple arguments about some, some shots, whether they'd make it or not, but um, we, we got everything in there, I think. And Very cool. This one isn't from anybody, not this is just for me, for you directing, like, did you have a game plan going into this in year one or after your first year of filming? Like, where did the full idea or the vibe or, 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 you know, when did it kind of manifest itself during the process or, or going into this when you knew you were going to get Stojan's footage and you kind of know his style, like when, when did you decide how the image was or how this was going to kind of portray? Yeah, I think originally uh, I'd kind of written down this whole creative plan about like three themes and going into the, each of them in a very like stylized way. And, um with any film project that isn't like a very like a narrative film or a, like a very straightforward commercial things change and everything started to change um as like you know Henrik's balancing competition skiing and filming for this movie so like schedules change and where we're able to film and who's going to come with us on trips and like how often we can go meet up with Stoge and all that. So things are just constantly changing. And if you looked at my first draft of the creative behind this film, it's like almost entirely non-existent. Um, and actually, I mean, we, Matthias got this huge dump and like we had an idea of what we wanted to do, but the footage was different than, you know, anyone ever expected. So Matthias ended up setting a lot of the tone in post and uh we brought him in as a co-director and the two of us just kind of sat down with this puzzle piece of like what do we do with this like we have so much cool stuff but it's not what we planned um how can we make this as cool as possible so it was fun man i mean it was quarantine work stopped for me at least uh, and a lot of other people in production and matthias and i just kind of sat in his house for a few weeks and, and <laughs> figured it out and jammed on it and you know when you're delivering to clients there's rules and there's feedback and there's all this like killing of your creative vision and I think that was so fun about working with Henrik and Stoge as they were like do your thing boys so we sat down and just said no rules for the yeah. whole thing and so cool had some fun with it wow I mean well yeah. oh go ahead you get no I was just gonna say I think it's so sick to like the way you you put it together where it's like a high production like looking film but it's like still so core and like ski movie feel and it's like i i love that i don't talk so much in the movie because i don't really like talking <laughs> and it's just like the images and everything like creates a story itself and you can like see that like all we really did was just like grind hard every day. And like, I like never worked as hard as I did these last two years. And yeah, it's insane. man. It, Firsthand. I watch, uh, like I said, I met up with Henrik at X games year one and he finished slope style that afternoon. And I got a call from Raf and he was like, yo, Henrik wants to go fill out his real street segment. That's due tomorrow. So we're driving over to Vail and we're going to go set up a spot. And like the night after he did X Games Big Air Saturday night, then Slope Style Sunday morning, we all drove to Vail Sunday afternoon, bought lights, bought shovels, set up a spot. Henrik didn't get a shot until like four in the morning. And it's like, he's, he's the hardest one. And, and then in the, the world, real he yeah. had to be sent in by seven in the morning. So, yeah. Like, oh, so Henrik shit, stayed up to... late editing his own real ski. <laughs> He like called me into his hotel room to like show him a couple things. And then he edited like until seven and submitted his real ski. This uh, is, this is a heavy monster consumption night. I can, I can imagine. Insane. So like, I think that was a lot, a lot of the other thing to balance is like 
Henrik is, it's honestly mind blowing how hard this dude works and it's inspiring to watch on any level, you know, like if anyone could work as hard as Henrik does in their given field, I'd probably be a, the Hollywood director if I worked as hard as Henrik did. So um, just trying to keep up with Henrik and Stoge who does keep up with him 365 days a year, like managing how we take all that energy and footage and turn it out to you guys to see it. Um, it was a blast, man. Very cool. Thank you guys. Uh, I, I got to give a round of applause for the whole production team. You guys did amazing. Everybody out there, Thank we can't hear all. it, but give them an E round of applause. The, the filming, the editing, the compilation, the way everything was put together, sound, sight, it was beautiful. So thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming on today to do a little Q&A and to chat with us. I really enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Much love, boys. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. guys. Let's move on with uh, some more of the questions and answers. We got more kids asking questions, and we're going to bring on some of the North American crew. So Carl and Clayton, who we had on earlier, we got a couple a couple questions for them that came in, and I, I'd love to just have them back on after that amazing little view there. Clayton still got it. Some of that was heat. <laughs> Carl, send it in the backcountry like always. I mean, you guys are – Ah, it was, it was a beauty to watch before we get to you guys. I gotta, I gotta ask one question for Henrik, uh, from Alex Hackle. And I, I gotta know this too. When you're you're on the shoot with Carl and Baker, why did you choose to do a double front flip? That looked so scary, (laughs) completely blind, absolutely like white out. Like why did they, where did that come from? Basically trying to think of like the least expected trick people would think of me doing, I guess. It was. It was. I did not expect <laughs> that. I didn't know we had like and, docs coming back or who I No, but and also like us being in uh, Baker, I we were hanging out with Parker the day before and I was like, all right, this is my big salute to Parker. Parker hit this road gap. He inspired me on the daily and yeah i actually tried to hit it switch my first hit and ended up knuckling because like some uh, moisture like carl was saying saying before like we had mad moisture coming in so when we speed checked the jump i had mad speed and i was like all right i'm gonna hit this switch and and then yeah ended up knuckling kind of but it was all good <sighs> but then you hike up the way around and like don't see anybody knowing know the filmers and i didn't see dark either and just got to the top and i was like all right what is the trick that will like boost me the most speed <laughs> and i and i just like yeah i want to i wanted so badly to do a i had talked to carl and to chris like the whole trip that like i i need to do a dub front i even talked about it the year before with jacob in chamonix that like i need to do a dub front during this movie and i I didn't want to do like the step in kind of Dumont inspired one. I kind of wanted like more like how Delorme did the Nolly front flip back in the day. And then mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I'm, I need to bring it with that type of flavor. And it was grimy. Yeah, it's the only dub, it was grimy. Only dub front yeah. I ever, only dub front I ever done. And ever? You hey, never did one knows? in the park or anything? I guess why would you? <laughs> oh, no, man. yeah, I didn't. Very cool. Uh, we got one for Carl from Joey, not Terry, uh, who's asking, you crush it in the backcountry, but I miss watching you ski park and urban. Do you still get out for some sessions ever? I got the same question, Carl. When are we going to get you back in the streets? Yeah, uh, I'm overdue and just waiting for my boy Wally to give me the invite. And <laughs> this old man back <laughs> What what about the park? Are you still in the park there at Sun Valley ever? We ever catch you in there? Yeah, a little bit here and there. I've gone a little brat crazy snowmobile in the last quite a few years, so I'm pretty hooked on that front. But no, I really like all kind of skiing and don't want to ever limit myself to one style and pretty much whatever is in front of me, be ready to shred that. And as far as like a filming perspective, really want to try to – create something where I can showcase park, urban, back country, and all in one. Very cool. So, long-term goal, Padrino. Just mm-hmm. 
or to Brett. <laughs> <laughs> he's just tr he's trying to get the thing to 12 o'clock always. All day. Uh, I got one for Clayton before we get to this other one. Uh, how do you decide, I guess, when you're out filming Urban with Henrik and some of these just these guys and with such an eye for film as well, where do you choose – how do you choose your features like nowadays? Like how do you choose what you're going to hit versus what you, what you want to shoot? Or, you know, it's always impressed me like with having both of those eyes and both of the abilities to, to film so well and ski so well, where, you know, how do you decide what you're going to actually ski on or what you're going to sit out on? Like what's that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, my filmmaking, my skiing are completely separate. Like, mm -hmm like when I'm out there shooting street, like I want it to look like, you know, they're two different art forms, you know, and as far as I consider it. So like, yeah, I never am trying to bring anything like cinematic into, into my skiing or something like that, you know? So it really makes no difference on that front. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, at times I have like when I made for lack of better or whatever, from like a writing standpoint, but um, yeah, I think just like, I mean, yeah, spot selection is like the most important thing for sure, I think, in street, you know, and it's like the hardest thing. And like at this point, it's kind of hard because um, I feel like I'm really picky and I've spent so much time in so many countries in North America, or at least in North America, that I'm like, I'm back in like Duluth and I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like, we're like back at Cascade Park is that uh, the spot that like has that big triple Double. kink and, yeah. and whatever. And I was like, just like cool what the hell am i supposed to do and then all of a sudden i was like no shit look at that that's actually a pretty sick line i think I and mean, you always surprise yourself but um i just want to back up though that was my first viewing dolo so yo that was insane and like for everybody who's seeing this like Henrik's the leader of our sport right now and like he's the only one who's going to be able to keep this tradition alive of making a quality video part and like and I mean, this ties into my answer about picking spots. Like it's a waste of time. I think almost like if you're having fun, sure, whatever. But if you're just going to hit one spot, like every spot you pick, every trick you do needs to be part of a bigger thing, you know? And that's, that's where shot selections always come from for me and all our homies like, yeah, cool. We got that already. I did this. And, and like, you can see what he did for two years. It's just like every one of those tricks that every like the best video part is I think every trick that everybody knows they want to see somewhere in the back of the head that hasn't been done yet. Like the obvious what's next, you know, you see it from guys like Nigel Houston who like keeps people making video parts in his sport because he's the best comp guy, but he's out there making video parts telling every pro, not like, not his fans telling every pro like, yo, you ain't, you're not something unless you're doing this, you know? And I don't know, I just want to give you so much thanks to like doing that for our sport. And like, I literally think it's like the survival of it. And that shit was just crazy. So, yeah. I agree. So much respect. Wow. For that. I mean, not enough Thank guys you. out there filming, you know, all the comp guys, you still compete with Henrik there. You're one of the, I mean, there's a few, but not as many as there used to be filming in the PAL filming urban filming anything long form or anything other than a, uh, a viral uh, Instagram or TikTok or something. So it's really cool to see that part of the sport staying alive. We got one that, more. Oh, Oh yeah. I was, can I, can I ask Henrik yeah, yeah. something off of, off of what you said, Henrik, uh, I know for every video part I've made, there's always like five or six tricks I never got. What'd you not get Ooh. on this? <laughs> this is good. I know you didn't. I know. I know you didn't get something. There's one. One. <laughs> He's trick. like, actually, no. I did get everything. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> did you watch the movie? I can't imagine there's any other <laughs> yeah, tricks out there. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, I like. I'm always like, every part. I'm like, I didn't get that one though. And it's like some stupid idea that I probably would have broke myself off doing. You know. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> He's actually. like, I did it all. I, I like, <laughs> No, but everything that I was trying, I kind of walked away with, in a way, yeah. But, like, I for sure know I, I can go, I should be able to go way harder and could push it further. But for that particular day, whatever I set out to do, I pretty much got, I think, at oh, least right. from the top of my head right now. But 
Yeah, yeah. I'm I sure guess there I meant is. more like something you were thinking, not like you went out that day to do that trick, like some idea you had, I guess. But maybe I just never did a two year. <laughs> when you got two years, maybe you really check all the boxes, huh? I clearly look like you did. <laughs> no, thank you. But yeah. No, I know one spot actually in Andorra, a big gap, super big gap rail that I did a big 450 to. And yeah, didn't really get that one. So mm, that's one. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> For the next project. Yeah, there you go. Sick, bro. Do what's you have a, any? Oh, go ahead. What's a what's a trick in your next two year project or whatever your next BC project will be? What's a trick you got on your mind to bring to the BC that no one's done yet? <laughs> it's a surprise. You, Triple you front having flip. me show all my all my cards right now. <laughs> yeah, not cool, bro. I would be bummed if I got. <laughs> <laughs> The no, thing, bro. I there, <laughs> there's a lot of things. What about the, I don't know what you call it, the car roll? Car flip? Car hot, hot car roll? The switch loop. Hot car roll? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you call the switched up front? The uh, high ball? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know uh, Rory always said speed ball to the speed forward ball. dub front. Yeah. <laughs> and lawn dart as a single. Yes, if you at least look out like <laughs> Henrik, you got any stories about these guys or any questions you, you want to ask them? Any fun no, stuff? Again, you like it was like such a treat and like I I was in a dream during the whole time filming both with Clayton and Cam in the streets. That was like like they like the the biggest street skiers ever basically and i it was so insane to witness it in person and for yeah to see it just like big big shout out to clayton for closing out the urban part with that line like in a park that he's been to many many times but just thought of a creative wicked line was insane and then to carl too like there is like so many clips that's not even in it that it's like so amazing. And I'm I'm just like so, so thankful for like all the knowledge that you passed on to me out in the backcountry this season with safety. And like there was like so many things that you taught me beyond the skiing too that was like so eye-opening and that I will remember forever. And I'll always remember all your tricks and everything. You seeing you stomp, stomp, stomp. Even if the camera's not rolling, you know Carl is gonna hike like five extra times and just get get some nice laps in there. Nose butt twelve and like all all types of fly. Yeah, amazing. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, man. And right back at you, hundred percent. You like going out in the backcountry. You're so humble out there, and you say that you were. I was teaching you out there, but I, in my eyes, it was vice versa. And I was the one taking notes and just seeing that energy, that focus, that motivation. And like, also knowing like you have the patience out there knowing like once you got your trick, like I'm the person you all get so fired up and go back out and do some more shit and get hurt and won't even be able to ski the next day. And you got that way of pacing it every day and making sure get the clip. All right, go rest up, get back in the morning. <laughs> do it again yeah gee and thank you of course but it was more a pleasure for me to shoot you one on me on spots that i hit years ago <laughs> literally <laughs> like that flat rail was actually it was actually sick i was like i'm filming the same fish angle of a trick i did a handful of years ago and he's punking me on it but it's like you know it's it's a literally no. a good feeling you know because you're like nice sick like someone's out here hitting this spot like you know, I don't know. We never knew if people were still going to be getting after a hidden street, honestly. Like at this point, it easily could have died, but you're keeping it alive. So it's sick. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank no, that you was just both. a big salute to you. <laughs> so it, it was, I, I wouldn't want to hit that spot without you. So it was perfect. And to have you set up the same shot, remember we were talking about it. And I was like, all right, I for sure need to do a 
two on <laughs> to something and then the press for you came to mind and you capture it safety. nicely yeah g yeah <laughs> yeah boys well thank you guys thank you carl thank you clayton you guys both killed it in there that was some serious heat i'm so glad i got to see i'm so glad you guys were a part of it and thank you for joining us today for this little hangout thanks for spending some time with us uh keep yeah, up the good, good work boys. boys we'll see you out there yeah boy good to see you wally later on guys yeah uh, at that, at this point, Henrik, we gotta we gotta finish up with the Euro crew. We got a couple more questions before we close this out. So let's bring the the Euro crew back in. Let's bring in Oystein and Noah and Jakob once more uh, for a couple more questions before we kind of call it a day here today. I mean, I'm running out of ammunition. I'm just my my mind's exhausted from watching that film. So I'm running low. Jakob's still in front of uh, the landscaping unit there. Shout out. (laughs) Uh, Okay, let's get back into it. This is uh, for Oystein uh, from Montpe, France. Uh, How was it for you to be involved in your first big movie movie shooting in the backcountry? Oh, he's on mute. (laughs) Classic. Oh there no! Yeah, no. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, it was amazing. It was super cool. I always wanted to 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 do backcountry stuff, and always ridden a lot of. Not a lot of, but I've always ridden pow on on pow days in my home resort, and always loved it, and wanted to get that experience and and uh do more of it so when i got asked it was it was an easy choice and and it couldn't be on a more perfect time than going to chamonix and like two two weeks straight with bluebird and with henrik and stoge and jakob and we had it was such a good crew and and to be able to learn from from uh you guys it was yeah amazing i couldn't ask for more really <laughs> i okay i like that more let's see more of that i want to i want to catch you uh catch you out there a little bit more often uh yeah i want to do more for sure nice heck yeah uh we got one for Jakob here uh it's currently being added in what was it like to to get back on the the backcountry jumps a little bit more like i mean obviously you've spent so much more of your time uh, climbing and skiing, uh, technical lines and gnarly stuff that I would never want to go down or go up. Uh, was it fun to get back with, uh, the, these young bucks and hit some jumps? You haven't missed a beat. Are we going to see, see some more booters in the segs coming up in the video blogs or are they going to be, uh, are they still going to be too extreme for me? <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not muted. No. Um, yeah, no, of course. It was super fun. I, I still do hit a lot of jumps. Uh, still do enjoy it, um, especially if the landing is made out of powder and not um, park, park snow or groomers. Uh, the body is getting, you know, a little sore from all those years of landing flat and going big on park, park booters and shredding on icy landings. But no, I still try to, I still try to build some jumps every now and then. And, and last year, um was actually kind of a one of those winners where i felt like i had almost gone a little too far in my uh, hunt for big gnarly lines and gotten almost too comfortable with those um a little more extreme type of lines and just wanted to step back for a moment and just you know like all that stuff can wait for you you know there's plenty of years to uh explore those realms of the sport and still wanted to you know, I still want to, you know, hit, hit, hit some booters, get some air and try some, uh, dust off the old dub corks and stuff. And unfortunately, uh, couldn't, all my shots didn't make it in the movie, but because obviously the, the bar is super high, but it's going to be, uh, there's going to be some stuff coming out for you, Tom. Don't worry about it. More, more oh, of that. Yeah. I like it. That, I, I like seeing Jakob back. I mean, 
I can't even comprehend some of the steeps you're skiing, but that was really fun to, to see you with the whole crew just laying it down on the jump still. Uh, I got a question for Noah, actually. So after all these years, you and Henrik, have, have you ticked off every urban rail in Andorra or are there more left to be done? I mean, that's a small town, right? Yeah, true. But um, I think there is way more to be done. Luckily, like almost okay. infinite, like how you can approach anything, you know it and like go back and do it differently. But like in amount of spots, there is way more to do. It's also because I don't think we've been able to like film here so much. Every time we're here, it's maybe not the best time to do it or we have other stuff to do. So I, I hope maybe this year or um, the upcoming years, I hope we get some more time home and then we're going to be able to check them out of the list like many more. Very cool. Yeah, I have, I have to add to that too. Mm. Like Notch was saying, like the last, especially the last two years, we really wanted to, like Noah last year for his real ski and the year before for my real ski. But unfortunately, these last two years was not so blessed with snow. So we, yeah, we got a folder together, a shared folder with, I think, like 84 different spots yeah. in it. And yeah, I think we have hit maybe four out of those 84 Ooh. and it's like so it's like so much like it's so sick like andorra is like all on a hill so it's like so many big spots with natural speed into it big drops with like actual landings so you can like if, if we get a good snow year like in 2018 it was so much snow yeah but neither of us got this year. i shout yeah. I hit one rail that year, and yeah. But if we get a snow year like that, then for sure we we will go and enjoy a lot. It's a good thing too that we still have to do this, and we have it here. It's just yeah. you know, anytime. Yeah, it is nice to have at least some more options there. Uh, I got one question from Nathan Solomon. I think this is originally for Henrik. Uh, what was your favorite trick in the whole movie? But I'm going to also pose kind of that the same like favorite trick or most trick you're most proud of to the whole crew as well. Like uh, Henrik first, what was your favorite? I mean, you went on a lot of these shoots. Was there a favorite trick or a favorite trip that, that really stands out from this whole movie? Like a moment that really is the, uh, the moment for you. Both my trips to Jackson were like the sickest ever i would say like mm -hmm. both times was basically just 10 days or maybe second year was like two weeks so 14 days but just the condition the vibe and the way we were stacking with the squad was like insane and i got some of my best shots ever i think there and one in particular it's like from the last, uh, the first year, and it's the last shot in the Jackson segment, which is a dub 10 tree tap. That was something that I wanted to do for a long time. Basically, ever since I saw the Lorm doing those dub back tree taps like eight years ago, nine years ago. And then I had planned to do it in the streets for a while. I had this one spot in Andorra that I had eyed it out for, for the real ski, but didn't get the snow to do it. And then, yeah, came, got to Jackson and I found, saw that one tree that was perfect for it. And yeah, it was a crazy, crazy one. Like it did, did maybe two or three dub tens, China nose tap, just the branches a little bit first, but didn't really get it. So I was with Max Gorham and Blaine as well. And they, they just like told me to like, just, just go for it straight in towards the, uh, like towards the tree and like hit it. And I hit it so hard and you see like all snow fly off and like fully got like one of those like slow-mo kind of where you have so much thoughts and like remember the whole 
airtime and I was like, I got so bucked and then like found my way to like get the good access, got the grab and like somehow came out and like stomped it. And that was like for sure one of my favorite tricks of the whole two-year project. Cool. Anybody else, a favorite memory or a trip or a moment with Henrik or the crew or something that like stood out for you guys with this project as a whole? I got to drop a little shout out to my brother, Oscar, for doing the yeah. fucking sickest dub backy yeah. Germany has ever seen. Huge. <laughs> um, on the Whoa. first jump of the trip we built, I think, pretty much. Um, yeah, that came out of nowhere. It was pretty ill. Yeah. yeah. Also, the first, first year of filming, when we went to Stockholm, we spent the New Year's in Jacob's cabin. That was a highlight for sure, too. That was a wicked way to start off the year. Yep. So in. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Again, I wish we had more time and we could chat forever. All three of you guys killed it in the movie as well. I can't wait to see more of the footage, Jacob, and everybody else, it sounds like, has so many more shots that couldn't make it past the cutting room floor. So I'm looking forward oh, to those so many. footage, that those season edits. Uh, I can't wait to see it all. I mean, everything that was in there was grade A hammers. So could have built a house with all those hammers. Thanks, guys. That was uh, really yeah. fun to watch. Hey, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, crew. thank you. Peace. Yeah. Thank you, boys. Salute. Henrik, man, I don't know what to say. This has been an amazing day. The movie was so good. Uh, I'm so proud of you. That was so fun to watch. Uh, any any other words for you? Any, any people you want to shout out, friends you want to thank or anything before we uh, sign off here? Yeah. Yeah, like always, if I would start – dropping names it would take a few hours to his name all because it's been so many but basically all family friends fans sponsors anybody that's been supporting from day one still supporting right now anybody that's watching skiing anybody that's yeah i'm i'm just so thankful and honored to be in this industry and the culture and the shit is the illest and let's keep this going Thank you so much, Tom, as well. And yeah, thank you. Happy to be here, man. I'm so proud of you. That movie was incredible. Everybody killed it. I want to thank you, Henrik, more than anything for skiing, making skiing what it is to you for the world, uh, the whole crew, all the athletes, the whole production team that joined us today. Uh, we got to thank Monster, New Schoolers and Down Days for sharing this. Uh, Bug Visionaries and Raf, of course, for everything he's done to make this project come to life. Everybody out there that stayed for two hours and is still watching me talk, thank you guys for how much you love skiing. That movie was amazing. Once again, it's for sale tomorrow on all media platforms, all video on demand, Amazon, Apple TV, blah, blah, blah. Hit the link uh, in the YouTube description. That's available 12 a.m. local time tomorrow. Download, support skiing, uh, and thank you guys all so much. Much respect, Henrik. Salute, brother. Salute. Thank you. And yeah, I please uh, go support this movie and show that if you liked it, obviously, then because it'll only get us more hype to put in the time and effort to really make something powerful rather than just like something that will drop tomorrow. Although the movie's dropping tomorrow, but <laughs> <laughs> well, for that that case, we'll make an exception. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Tom Wallace. You've been spending too much time with me today. Go enjoy your day. Cheers, Henrik. Thanks for chatting, buddy. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you.